Wi-Fi. We all love it, except when it cuts out, of course, but Wi-Fi is going to be changing for the better in three separate and major ways in the very near future, like the next couple months. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's jump in. Of course, I'm going to go into detail on these changes, but these three big changes, first of all, are that there's a new protocol, 802.11ax, so it's going to be after AC, which is the current latest one. There's also going to be a new naming system. So it's not going to be called 802.11ax or AC or anything anymore. They're changing that. And finally, we're going to be getting a new security protocol to replace WPA2 that is going to work a lot better. So the first of these is 802.11ax Wi-Fi. Now, I already made a very, very detailed video on AX Wi-Fi in the past. If you want to watch that, I'll put like a pop out or something that you can click on, but I'll go over the very basics here. First of all, AX Wi-Fi is going to be much faster, theoretically, up to about 10 gigabits per second over wireless. That's pretty crazy. Also, it's going to be still using the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz spectrums. So it's not going to be like some of the other ones that are like super high frequency, but they can't go through walls or some nonsense like that. It's still going to be able to cover the whole area. There's going to be several technical improvements that are going to increase the reliability of AX Wi-Fi and particularly in crowded areas, whether that's in public or maybe you're in an apartment building where everyone has a router, obviously, it should make it much more reliable. And again, if you want to know the details of these technical improvements, they are actually very interesting. Check out that other video that I mentioned. Some of the first routers that will support AX are actually announced and out already. One of them, for example, is by Netgear, which looks suspiciously like a certain Star Wars ship, but I'm not going to judge. And I think in the early months of 2019, we're probably going to see most high-end consumer routers by other manufacturers like Linksys pushing out AX Wi-Fi and potentially the next iPhone and the new flagship phones might have AX. I don't know. We can only hope. All right, the next big change is the naming system. So obviously we just talked about AX and then the other recent one is AC and then it was N and then G and B. And these letters are pretty much arbitrary and I think many people who are not technically inclined have no idea which one is better than the other and which one's the latest or anything like that. They're like, what is 802.11 AX? What the heck is that? You don't have to worry about that anymore. Now these protocol names are just gonna be replaced with numbers. So 802.11ax is going to be Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ac is going to be Wi-Fi 5, n is going to be Wi-Fi 4, and so on going back. And also, of course, in the future, it'll be like 7, 8, 9. The Wi-Fi Alliance, who creates these standards, also recommended some possible symbols you could use in apps and things, and maybe a logo on a router to show the version of Wi-Fi, so this will be a lot easier for consumers to know what version of the router they're getting. I think it'll also future-proof a lot of things, so instead of just choosing random letters in the future and getting super complicated, very easy. What comes after the next generation? The next number, very simple. Now, I do believe that the actual underlying protocols will still be there for technical people if they want to know, so you could still call it 802.11ax, but the consumer version is basically going to be called Wi-Fi 6. All right, so the final major upgrade is WPA3 security protocol. So you know we have WPA2. It served us very well since like back in 2006, but it is about time for an upgrade. And there are some things that definitely can be improved on WPA2, and we're going to get these upgrades. And again, this is something I also made a video about in the past in a little bit more detail, but let's give a quick rundown here. One of the improvements is brute force protection. So it'll limit the amount of times you can try a password per second or whatever. So it means that even if you have a weak password, it should prevent someone from brute forcing your connection. Also, there's going to be individualized encryption. So that means that even if someone's using the same password, they're all using the same password to connect, everyone gets their own actual encryption key, which is a lot better than right now, where if someone has the Wi-Fi password, they can still decrypt everyone else's connections because it's all based on the same thing. It's also using a stronger 192-bit encryption key as opposed to previously 128-bit. Now, 128-bit is still very strong. It hasn't been cracked, 
but it's just gonna future-proof it. And there's also gonna be the possibility of very easy NFC setup. So this will be a lot easier for setting up like smart home devices instead of having to, you know, use your phone to set everything up. If that device supports it, you should be able to just hold your phone up to the device, automatically connect and everything. Turns out some of the first WPA3 supported routers are actually out. Again, I think Netgear is the first, so they're kind of killing it, but I'm sure that in the next few months, we will see new routers coming out with it and potentially even previous routers will get it through a firmware update. I'm not sure about that, but we can only hope. And of course, this isn't gonna be a huge deal until really phones and laptops start supporting it, but I think it'll come on pretty quickly early in the next year and in the next couple months. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about how Wi-Fi is getting an overhaul in all these different areas. So hopefully you guys are too. So yeah, if you guys want, I recommend checking out some of my other videos that I have on here, of course. And until next time, be seeing you.